Hello everyone, I'm Vincent, co-founder of Flamingo Filter and Sparker official partner. Today, I'm going to talk about the Render Passes feature that was released with the version 92 of Spark AR. The Render Passes is an important feature that gives you a lot of freedom and flexibility in what you will be able to create. So let's get started. So for this tutorial, I have created a little example uh, with this 3D text called Cocktails. Uh, render Pass lets you bypass the way things are rendered to the screen. A Render Pass is a computation of numerical values and textures. It is particularly useful to help apply visual effects like light or shadow or special effect also known as shadows to different objects of the scene or to all the scene itself. First of all, we need to understand how things are normally uh, rendered to the screen. Everything that we see on the screen is what we have under device here. If I fold device, so it's everything here. And also our camera texture, which like you see is not inside the device. Render Pass allows us to process different parts of the screen separately and combine them together at the end to be rendered. To add the render passes to your effect, just go to device under render output here and click on create default pipeline. This will automatically add render passes to your effect. If you want to go back to normal, just delay the render passes patch and Spark AR will know that you want to use the default render pipeline. The scene render pass patch takes as background the camera texture and as scene object the device object. So as you can see, the camera texture is not part of the device. If I remove here the camera texture, the screen will be black and use the default color as background and we can change it like this. But now let's reconnect the camera texture and everything will be rendered and sent to the scene output. If we now look at render pass patches, we will see that there is three render pass. The scene render pass, the shader render pass, and the face extraction render pass. The scene render pass will render the object that we pass as an argument. The shader render pass will combine and render one or more visual shaders and texture into one. And the face extraction render pass will return the texture of the tracked face. We also have the delay frame. Here. It's a blue patch because it is a sender patch. So we, we, you will have to use it with a receiver patch. The delay frame patch will allow you to reuse the texture in the next frame, meaning that now you can create frame buffering, for example. Let's start using these patches. Now that we have all the scene rendered, we can apply visual shaders to all the scene, even with this 3D model, this 3D text model that we have added. For example, let's grab the Sobel filter here. So let's uh, give it a texture size, which is screen size here, and connect the texture. Here. So as you can see, we have applied the Sobel effect to all the screen, even to the 3D model text here. I will let me maybe make this bigger. Now, if we add the shader render pass patch here, we can, for example, change the resolution of the final texture doing, by doing this. By reducing the values, we are reducing the final texture um, resolution. This can be useful when processing visual shaders that doesn't need the full resolution of the texture. So this is an optimization process. What we could do using render pass now is for example add a neon effect to this text to make it more realistic. So to do so, I need the object um, that I can drag and drop like this inside my patch editor and then add a scene render pass here. I can pass my, my, I pass my object and then send the texture to the scene output so you can see. So I can grab only one object and uh, render it to, this, to the scene output to my screen. 
but as you can see here, the light uh, doesn't have any effect. So from my object, if I want the light to have an, an effect, I need to drag and drop also um, the light inside my patch editor. Okay, but uh, I don't need this to the to create a neon effect. So it was just to show you that you can lose the the light effect when you do it this way. And to create the neon effect, we are going to use uh, the blur patch here. Okay, so. And we are going to blur on the y, on the x axis, and the y axis. Okay. We can pass the size of the screen, but before that, uh, let me reduce the size of the screen. So, okay. And also, I do not need the full resolution to make it blur. Uh, so I reduced the, the resolution. I pass to this to the blur. I'm using also a shader render pass to connect to blur. Different step and here. Also, I can reduce the size. Okay. And so, if I connect my blur to the device to the signal plot, and then now you can see that we have blurred the, the texture of the 3D model that was added here. Um, for the effect, we can make this a little bit brighter. So let's multiply the color. So now we have a brighter uh, neon effect. Now we need to connect uh, what we have created here and the output of the first scene render pass. And to do so, we just need to create an addition. So I can grab all this here and then connect all them together. Okay. So now we have a neon effect. Now let's have a look to the delay frame. Uh, delay frame patch. So what we want to do is to mix the, the current frame with the delayed frame, with the frame just before that frame. So it should look something like mixing the current frame, which output output from the scene render pass here, with the delayed frame that is that output from this patch here. So to get uh, we use a receiver. Okay, a receiver to get the delay frame. And we will mix it. For example, let's find. Let's try this. We will mix it with the current frame. And the current frame is the first frame that we need to send to the delay frame here. And then what we do at the end is to uh, send to the to the screen to render the delayed frame. So instead of adding uh, the the first frame here which output from here, we can uh, send the delayed frame um, using a receiver. <laughs> yeah, here and delayed frame. But nothing shows up because we didn't send anything to the render pass here. And the render pass should be our delayed frame. So actually we are creating a loop and that's why this patch has been made is to be able to create loops. Um, so now I want to add uh, this to the render pass, but it shows a, a red wire because first it has to go through a rend shader render pass um, here. So now we have made a loop which mix the first frame and the delayed frame. So it looks something like, yeah, we have this delay frame effect. So now we have a real tipsy-like effects.